Hi, in this video we're going to talk about linear approximation. You might also hear it called linearization, so they, they will mean the same thing. Let's take a look at a graph. I have this function right here. This is going to be my f of x. And then down here I have my value of a. Now let's say I want to find, now by the way this is the y value at a. Let's say I wanted to find the y value at x0 or x0. How could I do that? Well, I can simply just evaluate f at x0, and that will tell me the y value exactly at that point. Or I can introduce the tangent line. Now notice what happens on the tangent line if I evaluate x0, it gives me that y value, which is actually pretty close, right? The difference between this point and this point, not that bad. Now, in fact, if you were to zoom in on this point, you're going to have your a value, which was here, and then your x value right here. And so you can see that they're actually very close to each other. So the tangent line is a good estimation of the y values on the function, as long as you are within uh, a certain distance from a. Right? Notice that as you move away from a, that the y value on the function will be very different than the y value on the tangent line. So let's stay near a. All right, so L of x, which is what we're going to call the linearization, all right, that's why we have an L, it's going to be the tangent line on f of x at x equals a. So right here, this is L of x, and this is my function f of x. Now, if I want to find the equation of this tangent line, all right, I need a slope. So m, which is the slope, all right, that's using algebra, we used m, but now we're in calc, so we're going to use f prime of a. That's going to be the same thing. All right, also to find the equation of a line, we need a point. Now, back in algebra, you probably used x0, y0, or x1, y1, but now we're going to use a, because that's what x0 is, and then f of a, which is its corresponding y value. So I have the point, I have the slope, sorry, I have a point, I have the slope. All right, now I can use the point-slope formula. You've probably seen it written like this, y minus y naught equals m x minus x naught. Okay, but now we're going to use the notation that we introduced, f prime of a, and this point. So instead of that, we're going to write l of x, because that's your function y minus f of a equals f prime of a x minus a. And now all we're going to do is we're going to solve for l of x. So solve for l of x. And when we do that, all we're going to do is we're going to take this f of a and bring it over to the other side by adding it. So that's going to be a positive f of a plus f prime of a x minus a. And this right here is my linearization, or my linear approximation. But again, remember that it is simply just the tangent line. So if you're ever asked to find the linearization, you can do the tangent line as well. Now, linearizations depend on a. So if I chose a different a, like right here, then its tangent line would be different. Okay, so just keep that in mind that Linearizations are not the same, you know, at any point on the graph. They will usually be different, different equations. All right, so how can we use this linearization? Say I wanted to estimate the value of the square root of 17. All right, well, linearization deals with functions, so we need a function to use. Now, if I chose, well, let's say, all right, look at square root of 17. What is it close to? I mean, I can't do square root of 17 in my head, but what could you do? We could do the square root of 16. All right, so if I use the square root of x and I use a equals 16, right, because then the square root of 16 is 4, then what would I have to plug in for x to get the square root of 17? Oh, that's just going to be 17. So now I have my a and my x naught. All right, do I have to use the square root of x? No you can use the square root of x plus 1, where a is 15. 
because that's again where I want to start. A should always be the number that makes the function nice, right? You don't want to make A something weird. So A is 15, meaning when I plug it in, I'll get the square root of 16, which means X naught would be 2. Sorry, not 2. 14, or uh, 16, there we go. Wow. Uh, and then if I did like the square root of X minus 4, then A is going to be, well, 20, and X naught would be 21. And that would always, you know, so if I plug in x naught, which is 21, I will get my square root of 17. Now, of the functions I've listed here, which ones are easier? It would be this one. Let's go ahead and use the square root of x. Now, down here I have, here's my a, which is 16. And then 17, let's just say, is like right here. You can actually see that the tangent line, okay, or the linearization at 16 it gives an excellent approximation for the square root of 17 because they basically, I mean, when you're looking at it, it looks like the same line. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the linearization at 16. We're going to find the equation of this line, and then we're going to use it. Okay, so we need a few things to find the linearization. First, we need a, which is 16. We need our point, all right, because it's a tangent line, and it's going to the tangent line is, needs a point. And so that's going to be 16, comma. Now remember that f of x is the square root of x. So the square root of 16 is 4. So that's our point. We now need the slope. Now that's going to be f prime of 16. So I need to find f prime. Well, here's f of x. So f prime, and you probably should have this one memorized, the square root of x, its derivative is 1 over 2 root x. All right, you can double check that, but that's going to be the derivative. So that means f prime of 16 is going to be 1 over 2 root 16, which is 1 over 2 times 4, which is 1 eighth. All right, so I have f prime of 16. That's my slope. I have my point. Let's go ahead and do the linearization. So we got L of x. That's going to be f of a plus f prime of a x minus a. All right, so what do we have? What's f prime of a? Well, f prime of a, that's 4. 4 plus f prime of a is 1 eighth, x minus 16. So here is my linearization right here. So let's go ahead and go back and use this. So if the linearization, which we just found was 4 plus 1 eighth, x minus 16, then what do we know about the linearization in the function? That L of 17 is approximately f of 17. And what's f of 17? It's the square root of 17, which is what I'm looking for. So if I want to estimate the square root of 17, let's just take a look at L of 17. So all we're going to do is just plug 17 in here. So L of 17 is going to be 4 plus 1 eighth 17 minus 16, which is 4 plus 1 eighth. Now 1 eighth, by the way, is 0.125. So my estimate is point or 4.125. So now what was the square root of 17? Which I'm just typing in the calculator right now. In the calculator, if you type in the square root of 17, it's 4.123105 um, so on. So 106. So it's not actually that bad of an estimate. So let's say I wanted to find the value of the square root of 12. All right, so notice again that my linearization, L of x, approximates my function, the square root of x, pretty well in this region. Square, there's 12, so here that is the square root of 12. So recall that my linearization is this. So then L of 
12 is going to be 4 plus 1 eighth, 12 minus 16. So that's 4 plus 1 eighth. That's a negative 4. So that's 4 minus a half, which is 3.5. And then if I were to do the square root of 12 in a calculator, we get um, square root of 12 is about 3.46. So that's, again, not too bad, especially that I'm doing very simple uh, algebra right here. Okay. So why, why can't I do uh, this linearization right here all the time? So why does x need to be close to a? Well, suppose you want to estimate the square root of 68. Let's take a look at the square root of fun squared function now. All right, this is my linearization at a equals 16. Well, here, so here's my a. Well, here's x at 68. This is going to be my L of, well, whatever that's, L of, sorry, L of 68. And then this right here, that's f of 68. Okay, but they're they're pretty far. I mean, I guess it's not a big difference, but they're pretty far. So, would you rather use a equals 16? No, you if if linearization only works when you're taking x values near a. Well, if you want your x value to be 68, then pick a different a. All right, what's something that I can square root that's close to 68? That's nice. How about 64? I can square root 64. How about 81? That's close. How about 49? That's also close. So don't do something very far away from what you're trying to evaluate. So notice what happens if I were to use, this is the linearization at 49. Okay, and then there's 68, square root of 68. You can see that that's actually a pretty good estimate. Come over here and you let a equal 64. Okay, you know the square root of 64. Right, you can you can actually see on this graph, right? The square root of 68, they look like they're it's exactly on the tangent. I mean, it's, you can barely tell the difference between the tangent lines. So what happens if I went really far away? Notice that uh, I chose a tan. Uh, this is the linearization at right here, a equals uh, nine, which is really far away from 68. And notice that it's a huge difference between the values. 